In this video, we're going to take the ZBrush Demo Soldier model into Character Creator, quickly AccuRig a skeleton, auto bind the skin, apply animations and poses, edit those poses, and send them back to ZBrush into your Pose Manager plugin library. Now, the first thing we're going to do is make sure everything's installed. So I'm going to go to my Real Illusion Hub and click this refresh icon to make sure we got the latest information in the hub. And under Character Creator, we're gonna go in here and install the latest. And then down here underneath add-ons for Character Creator 4, we're gonna choose ZBrush Pose Link and install that. This is gonna create a sub-menu underneath the plugins menu in Character Creator that'll make sending poses over to ZBrush super easy. Now in ZBrush, we are gonna need a plugin and that's gonna be uh, the ZBrush Pose Tools. So click this Product Home button. That's gonna launch a website here. Go to Free Download. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna see ZBrush Pose Tools. It's a plugin installed in ZBrush. So click the Free Download. That'll throw this into your download folder. So if I minimize out of here, you can see here's our ZBrush Toes Pose Tools folder. We're gonna right click in here. We'll say 7-zip, extract here. And that's going to put these three files. Essentially, it's a data folder with some files in it and a Z script. So if we go to where our other Z scripts are, which is gonna be on my computer, uh, C, Program Files, Max on ZBrush 2023, Z startup, Z plug 64, and already in here you're gonna have a bunch of data folders with information in them and Z scripts. So just go ahead and copy this data folder in here, copy the Z script in here, and then when you start up ZBrush, you should have a plugins ZBrush pose tools available to you. So just to check, we'll go in here to Z plugin, and there it is. ZBrush Pose Tools. Now, uh, I want access to that while I'm working. So if you double click this little divider over here on the left, that'll open up this little left-hand section. I'm gonna take our brush menu that's in here, click that white dot so we don't we can get rid of it. Take our Z plugin menu, grab that white dot and throw it over here. And now we have our ZBrush Character Pose Tools available to us. Now, we're gonna be using this with Character Create. If you don't have Character Creator installed, you can grab the free 30-day trial and you can follow along with us. Uh, but even if you're not using Character Creator with this plugin, I would still suggest downloading it and installing it. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here, like resizing your subtool and then also pose management with your layers. However, we're gonna use Character Creator and in order to grab a character that everybody has access to and you can follow along, hit the comma key on your keyboard and go to the Tools section and then double click Demo Soldier. Uh, hit the comma key to go out of lightbox mode, drag them out on your canvas, go into edit mode or hit T, and we'll go ahead and turn off perspective. So here is our demo soldier, and if you open up the tool, subtool submenu, here's all the subtools that make up this character. So we're going to send all these files over to character creator, we're going to rig him, animate him, send poses back, and that's going to be our basic workflow. However, there's a couple little setup things we need to do for this character. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to alt tap this knee pad here, and you're going to see that's going to select the knee guards subtool. However, the right and the left one are all one subtool here. I want to split these into right and left, so I'm going to hold down control shift, drag over a little section of this one, do control shift A, which is visibility grow all. We're going to go down here to subtool split, split hidden, and now we have knee guards and knee guards one. Now, just as some good rule of thumb naming conventions for when you're working in ZBrush and you wanna send files over to another program just to maximize compatibility, we're gonna avoid naming like this where it's like knee guards and knee guards one. It's not really that descriptive. So we're going to here to rename and we'll call this knee underscore R. So instead of using a space, use an underscore again, just to maximize compatibility, avoid special characters, use unique names. For example, we'll name this one knee left underscore L you know, all the basic naming conventions. Now, the reason we're doing that is gonna be more apparent when we're in Character Create, but just really quickly, we're gonna have two types of objects when we bind to our skeleton. One of them's gonna be, let's call it like soft bound, where it's gonna be bound to multiple joints like the body or the boots here, where the top boots will be bound to the lower leg, and then the bottom part of the boot will be bound to the foot. So in this instance, for the boots, it's fine for it to be one subtool because it's going to be bound to the entire joint hierarchy. However, for in the case of the knee pads, we're just going to bind these to one bone. For example, the right knee and the left knee, let's say. So when this joint rotates, this one will follow. However, if these were both one subtool, of course, we don't want the right knee to dictate the rotation of the left knee. So that's why we split these things out into their own subtool. Now, another thing we're gonna to need to do before we send it over 
is resize the character. Right now, if I go in here and just say append a cube, this right here is a two unit ZBrush cube and it's a generic unit. So, you know, he's one, two, four, six, he's eight units tall. Nobody knows that that's feet, centimeters, inches. It's just a generic ZBrush unit. So let's go ahead and delete this out of our scene here. And in order to resize him, the, it's very important, go to the very top subtool here. This is his body. So if I go into solo mode here, this is top of his head to the bottom of his feet. This is a nice subtool to have selected to make sure when we resize him, it's using this as a nice bounding box for all of our objects. So over here under the ZBrush Post Tools plugin, you're gonna see number one is resize. You can use centimeters or feet. So if we switch over here to feet, these are our feet options. These are just presets if you just wanna dial them in really quickly. Of course, if you want to, just like anything else in ZBrush, you can click and drag the slider to select a number or just tap in here and then type in a number and hit enter. Uh, we'll go ahead and use this preset, the 6.23 preset. And again, we wanna make sure that his body is selected and then we're gonna hit resize. We're gonna go ahead and verify this. We'll hit yes. Alrighty, so now he is size compatible. And this is really important, not just for character creator, but if you're gonna be using this, you know, sending this to Max Miyamoto Blender Cinema 4D, having it at a realistic human height scale, as a, and also with rendering, if it's using like subsurface scattering and things need to be scaled appropriately, this is a very important step for not only compatibility in ZBrush, but also compatibility with other programs. Now, another thing we need to talk about, if we turn on our floor here, uh, by default, the floor is turned on in the Y direction and it's at, the it's at the bottom of his feet. However, you do have two, what looks like world axes. So you may be thinking, well, it looks like this one is our world axis and that just means the zero, zero, zero point of our 3D universe. Uh, and then if you hit BPR, the shadow is gonna fall right on that plane. And that's exactly what ZBrush does. So again, if we turn on our floor here, essentially what ZBrush is telling the floor to do is go go to the lowest bounding box of the lowest sub tool and put a plane there so we can catch shadows on it. However, if you go in here to draw and then change this elevation from negative one to zero, that's going to raise the floor where the actual world axis is and that's right in the middle of his pelvis here. Now, if you wanted to, you can hit W on your keyboard, go in here to move multiple, just click this icon, and you can move all of these up. We're gonna let AccuRig do that for us and character create, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you this is really what's going on in ZBrush and other programs. So let's go ahead and turn our floor off, and we'll hit Q to go back into brush mode. And before we send this over to character creators, one more thing I want to talk about, and that's kind of a ZBrush file handling quirk. So if we go over here to Demo Soldier, uh, if I get if I hit solo, you're gonna see this is his body, right? So I don't need to have this name Demo Soldier. I'm gonna go down here to rename, and we're gonna rename this body. Now, if I go in here to File Save As, and we save this file out as Demo Soldier underscore CC, and hit Enter, that's going to save a ZPR or a ZBrush project file. And when I save that file, it didn't rename this node. However, there's another way to save things in ZBrush, and that is a Z tool. So if I go in here to tool, save as, and I save this as demo soldier CC, you're gonna see it's gonna rename my top node. It did save the Z tool right here, but it did rename this node. If you're gonna be using Z tools, what you're probably gonna to wanna to do is do insert a poly mesh star. I'm gonna use this bent arrow to put it at the very top. We'll turn on transparency and hit W on our keyboard and we'll scale this down. We'll just kind of put it in the middle of the character out of the way and we'll turn transparency off. So now if I rename this one to body and then we have this node at the, or this sub tool at the very top and we save this one. We'll just save over the Z tool. Now this one will catch the name and this one will stay named body. Uh, if you don't want this visible, just turn that eyeball off. And now let's talk about sending files over. If you're using the Z tool saving method, what you're probably gonna do is go up here to tool and you're gonna see there's a go Z button. By default, this go Z may not go anywhere. You might have to go just to the right of here and hit this R button. This is going to reset the selected go Z enable application. Ours is set to character create. So hit this R button. It'll cycle through installed programs on your computer and you can choose character create and its location. If you ever need to reset where that location is, you can go in here to preferences, go Z, and this is where you can like clear your cache files, 
as well as update all your paths or update, for instance, the path to character creator. So now, once GoZ is set up, you don't want to hit this GoZ button probably. That's just going to go Z over one individual sub tool. It's going to take this body and send it over. In this instance, we want to send over all the visible sub tools. So in this case, we would say visible, or if you're using not the Z tool, so we just delete this out of here. If you're using the file save as Z project method, in this instance, we can just hit this all button and this will send over all of our sub tools. Now, one thing I want to call out is you're going to see all of these sub tools here are, uh, have multiple subdivision levels. So if I go down here to geometry, this one has, for example, three subdivisions. If we alt tap the shirt, this one has two. What GoZ is going to do when I hit this all button, it's going to send all of our sub tools over, but it's going to drop down to the lowest subdivision level. This is a feature and it's a really cool one. Essentially what we're going to do is send all of our lowest subdivision levels over to character create. It's going to move the verts around on those low res objects to pose it. And then when we send them back, it's going to bring back those low res or sub D one verts. And then we're still going to retain all of the details we have in our higher subdivision levels. And again, there's a lot of really cool stuff we'll show you as we continue on in these videos, but I just wanted to sh tell you that's what's happening. So, like I said before, we're going to go over here to Tool All, and that's going to run GoZ. It's going to drop all of the subtools down to their lowest subdivision level and send it over to Character Creator 4. So now what GoZ did was automatically launch Character Creator for us, and in Character Create, it popped open this GoZ Options dialog box. You can leave this at the default, create prop, update mesh and texture, merge all props checked on, and then just hit this update button. Now, what that did was bring everything in as a prop. You can see everything's a prop right now, and it merged it all under one node here. It's named body. We also have a body geometry in here, but it's basically all the props are merged under one node. And if we move our viewport around, you're going to see he's still right in the middle of our world but we'll have AccuRig fix that. But before we do that, let's go over here to Edit, Preferences, scroll down a little bit and turn on Info, and you're gonna see our object height is 189.97 centimeters, which I'm assuming is convert, you know, whatever our the feet units we chose uh, converted to centimeters should be about that. Go ahead and turn that off, close that menu. And again, with this top node selected, we're gonna go in here to the Modify area, and we're gonna choose AccuRig. Now, when I click that AccuRig button, that puts us into AccuRig mode. So we're going to stay here and do a bunch of AccuRig stuff. And then when we're all done, we're going to click this again, and we're going to go out of AccuRig mode. Now, the first thing you're going to notice that it did was move everything up so that he's standing on the floor. Very useful. Now, really, the only thing you can do in AccuRig right now is create guides. But before we do that, you're going to see he has like a backpack and a shirt and knee pads on. We want to put these guides where the actual joints are going to be placed and where to put these joints is going to be based on his body, not his clothing. So we're going to go in here, click this little down arrow uh, right here at the very top. We can turn that eyeball off. That's going to turn off visibility for all of these objects. And then right here for the body, turn that one on. So now when we create our guides, we're going to do it for the selected mesh, just the naked body. And then we're going to hit this create guides button. There we go. And now that we've created guides, we have a lot more options available to us. So first things, let's uh, just kind of go through this. So if we're zoomed in on the character, let's say, we can hit this first button here to frame our character. And then if we want to just look at like an orthographic view, we can toggle off perspective and change it to orthographic with this button here. So again, we'll go ahead and zoom in. And by default, this very top guide is selected. So you can go through here and select these different guides. You'll notice they're color coded as well. Uh, all the ones down the middle are orange. All the ones on the right side of the body are green. All the ones on the left side of the body are blue. Now let's select this top one again and we'll zoom in and we're going to use this guide diagram to place these guides. If you don't want to see it, you can go over here and uncheck display placement diagrams, but they're super useful. We'll go ahead and leave that on. If these guides are a little bit big, you can go all the way to the right here and click this button and change this gizmo display setting size down just a bit and then close that menu out. So 
Again, selecting this very top guide here, it's gonna tell you where it should be placed. So, you know, kind of right underneath his nose here. However, when we go to the side of the character, and if you want to, you can go up to this menu and you'll see there's hotkeys for different views. For example, front, right, top, left, you can use those uh, as well. We're just gonna move the viewport to the right and you're gonna see what it's really looking for is in the human body, there's a spine and that plugs into your skull. And then right there at where the spine connects with the skull is where this one's gonna go, kind of where your atlas bone is. So we're gonna go ahead and position that appropriately. And then we're gonna click on the next guide down and we go to the, again to the right. And that's gonna be where the spine connects into your torso or your rib cage. And we'll go ahead and put that at basically the base of the neck. Now, while we're moving this around, you're gonna notice you can't move this to the right or to the left, these middle ones here. Uh, if you want to, you can turn off symmetry selection and move this over to the right. But generally speaking, we want these middle ones to stay in the middle. So we're gonna have this one selected. We're gonna snap that back to the center plane and we're gonna keep that symmetry, symmetry selection on. Now, when we go down here and click on this little clavicle one, you're gonna see if you basically follow the line of this neck down to where it kind of starts sweeping over to the shoulder, that's the point where this one's gonna go. So again, we're gonna follow this neckline down to like the base of the neck, and then as it sweeps over to the shoulder, that's where we'll put that one. Uh, and then if we follow the trapezius straight out parallel this one should be perpendicular to the guide we just placed, again, parallel to the trapezius line over the shoulder. And then this is kind of centrally placed. Speaking of centrally placed, if we go over here to the elbow, uh, as we're moving this around, number one, you're gonna see it's moving right and left, again, because we have symmetry selection turned on, but it's also positioning it right in the middle of our object at all times. That's because this midpoint placement is checked on. Now, if he had multiple layers uh, and you wanted to put him in the middle of those, you could change this to whole mesh, but we'll go ahead and leave this on front part. Now, if you had very specific geometry you wanted to match, what you can do is go over here to body and there's some display options. If you check this down arrow, you can see uh, we have wireframe on shaded. Go ahead and choose that. And now you can use your geometry to place these guides appropriately. The wrist, you know, just above the palm where the wrist kind of bends. Uh, the pelvis here, we'll go ahead and select that and we'll put that right below the belly button. This is the kind of the crease where the thigh meets the torso. We'll go ahead and put that there. And then obviously this one goes where the knee bends and then where the ankle bends. These are all pretty self-explanatory. And then this bottom foot one here, we're gonna move this forward right where the toes start to bend. And again, in the middle of the foot. So here all of our guides are placed. So we can go ahead and generate a skeleton based on these guides. Now you may be thinking, well, what about my fingers? That's coming up next. So we've already created our guides. We're gonna generate a skeleton based on these guides and we just type in the number of fingers or sorry, drop down number of fingers. We have five. So we're gonna say generate skeleton using these guides. And now you can see we have a, a entire skeleton in here along with finger guides now. If you want to, you can see the skeleton if you go over here to the bone list or hit F3 on your keyboard. Essentially, we were in scene. Oh, by the way, if you were in content by default, you can just click the scene tab and that'll be all everything that's in your scene. Uh, here's your bones. So this is the bone hierarchy that makes up your character. Or you can then go in here and just select the bones in your viewport here. So if I wanted to move this around, what I might do is just turn off midpoint placement and let's say I wanna you know, bring this you know, a little bit more forward in the body where the clavicle is. And if I'm happy with that, I'll turn midpoint placement back on. So feel free to move your bones around at this point. Now for the finger placement, let's go ahead and uh, this first one here is go uh, frame right hand. That'll zoom in on the right hand here. And then as we zoom in on it, and again, click these guides, it'll guide you through how you should position these. So this one, uh, place parallel to the index finger. So if you follow this index finger line straight back, it should probably go right about in here. So we'll go ahead and move this over. And if we go to this one here, it's gonna tell you the joints of the same finger should be parallel. It's actually gonna say that for all of the finger joints, ideally. So if we go down here, this one should be parallel to this one, so straight down. And then this joint right here is a special one. Now, if you click the bottom part, the round part, it's gonna be a positioning guide as we've been using. But if you click this arrow, it's gonna to turn to a rotation. This, you're gonna set this rotation so that if this arrow rotates down, it hits you right in the nail. That's gonna make sure this thumb bends. It doesn't like bend weirdly to the left or to the right. It's gonna bend exactly how the human thumb should bend. 
Uh, and then this very last guide here, we'll just put that at the base of the finger. And then the exact same thing with these other fingers here. You're going to put this where the knuckle's going to bend. And it does a pretty good job. You can, you'll notice we're not really changing the joint, uh, the guide positions all that much. Just kind of nudging them into place. Uh, keep these lines parallel. And again, use your geometry to dictate where these should go. This geometry isn't super for animation, but it'll work. And there we go. If you want to look at the other hand, just click the other hand and make sure that everything, uh, when you were had symmetry turned on, it should keep them all the same as the other side. But, you know, just double check. There we go. We got our character. We'll go ahead and go back into perspective mode. And the very last thing we need to do in AccuRig is bind our skin. Now, before we do that, we don't want to just bind the body. We want to bind the body and the clothing and all the accessories, too. So over here under the body, we're going to turn the eyeball back on. So all of our subtools are back on. We're going to change the body shading mode back to normal. And then let's choose boots and then shift select the very last subtool here. So we select all of them. Now what we're going to do is just like we talked about in the beginning, we're going to get rid of, or we're going to deselect, I should say, the rigid bound objects. These are objects that are going to be bound to just a single joint. So for instance, the backpack, the shoulder guard, the goggles, the knees, we'll go ahead and deselect those. So again, with our soft bound objects, objects are gonna be bound to multiple joints in our hierarchy. With those selected, we're gonna make sure selected meshes is checked on, and we're gonna go down here to bind skin. What that's gonna do for our smooth bound objects is go ahead and bind those to the joint hierarchy. So again, whenever those joints bend, the, the meshes are gonna be influenced by different joints. And then all of our rigid bound objects are going to be uh, loaded as accessories. And those objects are just going to be bound to one single joint. So again, as that single joint rotates, that object will rotate along with it. There you go. You see that only took a couple seconds. So here we see our objects are organized a little differently. We have a top node. This is our character node. And then underneath here are our soft bound objects. And then up here is our accessory objects. And at the very top is our character node that has both our soft bound and our rigid bound objects in it. Now before we leave AccuRig, if you want to, you can go in here and do this check animation button. Just turn that on. This will allow you access to the animation player. So right down here at the very bottom, there's a couple of base animations you can check. Another, a good one for this is underneath body rig. Just do full body. This will load a calisthenics test, just going through a really broad range of motions for your character. You can go over here and you can play the animation will play through or you can pause it and you can just kind of scrub through so it looks like everything's working pretty well and again you can choose other motions in here you can go in like soft physics and like spin around just again to check different animations and if everything's working pretty good i'm going to go over here to remove and i'm going to say res restore bind pose so we're done with accurig we're feeling pretty good about what we've made i'm going to turn off check animation Actually, one more thing you can do before we leave is underneath the skeleton and bind skin, you can hit the save button. This is going to save a bone profile. So if you ever want to come back in or just change the character, but use the same demo soldier at the same scale that you're using, you could just save off a, call it demo soldier CC bones. We'll go ahead and save that. And that's just a bone profile that you can load in here to just so you don't have to go through the guide creation process and positioning these again. You can just load that in if you want to. So now, once we're done with AccuRig, again, all we got to do is touch the AccuRig button and that'll take us out of AccuRig mode. And now we're back here in Character Creator. Now, before we start applying animations, there's one really important thing I want to do. Right now, if we go back into ZBrush and turn on our floor, you're going to see our original ZBrush file is still stuck down here at the middle of the floor. That's not great. I don't want to do that. So before I start applying poses to this, I want to raise him up to where our current character creator object is. Now, if you look up here, you're going to see there's a Go Z button. So just like in ZBrush, we had a Go Z that put all of our subtools over here. This is a Go Z button that'll send all of our subtools back. So with this very top node selected, hit this Go Z button, and we're going to relink all of these objects, and we're going to use the current pose for that, and we're going to hit Go Z. That's going to send, again, all these meshes back to ZBrush. It's going to raise all of the subtools up to the floor. And in fact, let's go ahead and do a file save as, and we'll save over our Demo Soldier CC. And just like I said before, you know, the body had multiple subdivisions. We didn't lose them. It just moved the low res verts up 
and we still have access to our subdivision levels. And in fact, back in Character Creator, we can go ahead and say File, Save Project. And we'll call this Demo Soldier CC. So now if I close both these programs out, I can load them both back up and they'll still be compatible and be able to talk to each other back and forth. And I'm gonna insert this here. Uh, if I go into Edit Pose, so in the Motion Pose tab, there's an Edit Pose option. This will bring up this Edit Pose window. If I select this knee, and we can go ahead and unlock the ankles here while we do this, and I go into Rotate Mode, you're gonna see when I rotate this knee, the knee pad rotates with it. When I rotate this knee, it doesn't. So let's go out of this mode. I'm gonna select this accessory, the knee left, and if I go back to the Attribute tab and scroll down, you're gonna see there's an attach section. Uh, this is attached to CC Base L Calf Twist, and this one is attached to Thigh Twist. If I want to, I can go in here and pick Parent and then just click in the general vicinity and that'll choose a different bone, or I can go in here to this three dots button and change it from Thigh Twist up here to Calf Twist. Hit OK. And then now when I go back in here to Edit Pose, oops, let's deselect everything. Let's go back into Edit Pose and then choose that right leg again. Now when I rotate, this will be attached to the correct bone. So we've got our character create set up and we also have that compatible and linked with our ZBrush file. So the first thing I'm gonna do is if I go down here to the motion area again, we can go in here to pose and you're gonna see character creator has given us a T pose as well as an A pose. And we can send those both back to ZBrush. Uh, and again, you can go in here to remove and say restore bind pose if you just wanna go back to the bind pose. Uh, to do that, it's right above the GoZ. We don't want to GoZ this uh, stuff over. We're going to be using the plugins ZBrush Pose Link. And we're going to tell this send the T pose and the A pose to our ZBrush Pose tools. So if we click that, that's going to send both of these poses over to our ZBrush file. So now let's talk a little bit more about this awesome uh, pose, pose tools here. So for example, if I click uh, underneath the character pose tools, we've already done the resizing. And now if I click T pose, that'll take the character to our T pose or A pose. And if we turn A pose off, that'll put us back into our default pose. Now you'll see right here, we have refresh pose list. This is if we shut down ZBrush, we shut down character create, and then we loaded ZBrush back up. Essentially what it's doing, if we scroll down here and open up our layers menu, what character create has sent over using that pose plugin is layers labeled CC pose underscore T pose, CC pose underscore A pose. So when we're sending poses from character create over to ZBrush, it's going to create a new layer for every single subtool. If I just click the down arrow, that's going to cycle through our subtool selection. Then you're going to see we have layers on all of these different subtools here labeled appropriately. And those labels are telling this pose creator what to activate and deactivate for all of our subtools. So if I close down ZBrush and open it back up, all I gotta do is hit this refresh pose list, it'll look at our layers and then populate this appropriately. Now we don't have any, all of these undefined or a bunch of poses that we can use. If you wanna just create your own pose from scratch, you can go in here and hit cre uh, record new pose. That will create a new layer for all of our objects, then you can move them around. And then you can save your new recording and that'll be a new pose. We're going to use Character Creator for that because it's so fast and easy. But I just want to let you know that's available to you. We'll get to that in a later video. So back in Character Create, let's go ahead and apply some animations. We already know how to do this one. If we go down here to Motion, again, we'll go in here to uh, Soft Physics. We'll turn uh, do Dance Turn. And again, you can hit Play and that'll play your character through here. Or you can scrub through the animation. Pick a pose that you like, go back in here to plugins, ZBrush pose link, and this time we're going to send current pose to ZBrush pose tools. And again, that's going to create a new layer for all of our subtools. This one's called CC pose underscore pose one. So now we have a new pose one. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. So with this one selected, I'm going to say rename, we'll call it pointing. That's gonna go through and rename all of those layers to be CC pose underscore pointing. So now when I unselect this, it'll go back to our default state. And then if I turn it back on, that's gonna activate our pointing. If I go back to character create, 
again, if you want to, you can say, hey, let's go back to restore buy and pose. Uh, if we go in here to content, they're gonna, there's a ton of content you can download uh, with different animations. I'm gonna go down here to animation, motion. We'll choose human male perform. And we'll do this uh, birdcage here. So we'll just double click birdcage. It's gonna say, hey, cannot apply motion invalid file or character not compatible. Hit okay, go back to your scene. And remember, this is our character node right here with all the softbound objects. Go ahead and select that one. Go back to content. Then you can double click this or drag it onto your character. And that will apply this animation to your character. So now when I scrub through here, that'll go through and create a pose. So we'll go ahead and choose this one. And you'll see as he's moving, he kind of walks out of frame. Uh, in this instance, I don't really mind it. However, if you want, right here, you're gonna see there's a lock position. You can turn that on and that'll keep him locked in place. So he'll kind of slide along the floor as he's doing his pose. So we'll go ahead and have him reaching. And again, I'm gonna go in here to plugins, ZBrush pose link, send current pose. We'll hit rename. And there you go, you have another uh, pose in here. Now, there's some more options we're gonna talk about in later videos. This was kind of an everything all at once that you can follow along with, but we're gonna get into cloth. We're gonna get into painting weights. We're gonna get into tweaking our animations here. For example, I'll just give you a little sneak preview. If you go in here to your modify motion pose, we can go in here to edit pose. And this will give you the ability, for example, if you zoom in on the hand here, we can click this palm area you can go through here and you can make a fist or spread the fingers out all at once you can go by individual finger and curl you can select for example individual components and you can use this to rotate in ik mode or you can switch over to fk mode if you want to choose the individual joints here uh, but in ik mode another thing you can do is if you grab this and move it the body will follow along so you can use that to your advantage you can go through here and you can pin different joints, all sorts of cool stuff you can do. Again, this video is getting too long. I'm gonna stop it here, but I just wanna let you know that we're gonna be getting into a lot more things after this video. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and close out of this menu here. I'm gonna go in here to remove, we're gonna restore our bind pose. Let's go in here to file, save project, and then same thing in ZBrush. We'll turn off our reach pose. We'll go to file, save, and again, we'll shut down ZBrush and we'll shut down Character Create. We'll relaunch ZBrush. We'll go to File, Open, load up our file. We'll go ahead and open Character Creator. And while that's opening, if I go in here again, we'll close out of our brush menu. We'll go in here to Z Plugin, drag that over to the left. Under ZBrush Pose Tools, you're gonna to see, oh, all of our poses are gone. However, they're still there if we go in here to our Layers menu. All of our stuff is still here. So all we gotta do is hit refresh pose list. That'll go through and look at our layers and re reactivate all of the poses that we have for this character. And then in character create, we'll go to file open. And again with scene, character, body selected, we'll go to content. And instead of doing an animation, we'll go down here, well, animation and we'll go in here to pose. These are just poses that are already set up. So we'll have him lean against a wall. We'll just double click that. And then again, we'll go in here to plugins, ZBrush pose link, send current pose. We'll say rename. And there you go. We're all set back up. We're linked up. We have all of our layers. And we're ready to keep doing all sorts of poses. What we're gonna do in the next video is send one of our own custom creations from ZBrush into Character Creator. We'll rig, animate, pose it out, as well as bring in our own custom accessories from ZBrush, again, into Character Creator, and even bring accessories from Character Creator back into ZBrush to use.